Let's now speak to Sir Richard Sheriff. He was NATO Deputy Supreme Commander between 2011 and 2014. He's also the author of the book 2017 War with Russia, an Urgent Warning from Senior Military Command. And he's managing partner of Strategia Worldwide. He joins us from Salisbury here in the UK. Sir Richard Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Uh, first question to, I guess, the latest uh, developments uh, today uh, that Russia has decided to uh, put its nuclear deterrence units on high alert announced by uh, Vladimir Putin today. What do you make of that? Well, it's a very worrying development. Uh, it's a, a sign of desperation, I think, on, on, on Putin's part. He knows that the war is not going according to plan. He has failed to achieve the objectives he set himself at his armed forces at the beginning, uh, and he's running into trouble. Um, I think the key point here is, though, that this is classic bullying by Putin, and we must match strength with strength and not blink. Uh, your book that came out a few years ago, 2017 War with Russia, an urgent warning from senior military command. I mean, it's a prescient warning, uh, to say the least, where you sort of predicted that there would be this kind of confrontation and that you were worried that the West wasn't prepared enough. So what do you make of the EU sanctions that we've heard announced, the fact that uh, Germany has now overhauled its uh, military spending? Do you think enough is being done now? Well, I'm absolutely delighted at the German announcement today. I think the EU is really stepping up to the mark. And this is one thing that Putin has completely underestimated. There are other issues he's got wrong. But one thing he underestimated was the, the resolve and strength of the West. Um, and it's, it's good news. Um, it's a great start, but more can be done. And I think the key, again, the key point here is that the NATO deterrent capability needs to be ramp, ramped up ramped up quickly on the eastern flank of NATO from Estonia in the north right down to Romania in the south, everywhere where there is a, a frontier with, with Russia, with Belarus and with Ukraine, because only through deterrence uh, can NATO ensure that this thing does not go any further. I mean, you mentioned that that's what NATO has to do, but several NATO countries don't actually meet their uh, commitment uh, to NATO. So is NATO ready to act the way that you think it should act now? Well, NATO has already deployed the, uh, announced the deployment of the NATO response force, which is a good start. But more needs to be done, as I said. I would like to see significant land forces supported by maritime and air forces being deployed into the Baltic states, into eastern Poland uh, and, and, and uh, Slovakia and Romania to really demonstrate that NATO is going to deter, is determined to defend every inch of NATO territory, should there be any hint of a Russian incursion. What do you make of the fact that perhaps Russian forces have not been able to advance the way that they were hoping to uh, within Ukraine itself? Well, the first thing to say is the this is down to the heroic defense of the Ukrainian armed forces and the civilians who've picked up rifles and, and joined the battle. So I, it, it's impossible to overstress the, the um, inspiring nature of the, of the way the Ukrainians have fought like tigers, continue to fight like tigers. I have to say, I don't think it's a surprise. Uh, they feel a real sense that their, 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 their nation, their country has been despoiled and violated. Uh, and so the Russians have got it coming to them. Um, but the Russians have really not demonstrated from a professional point of view. I thought they were better than this. I think they've been pretty incompetent. Uh, and they should be looking to themselves. Uh, and Putin as well has, misunder has, has mismanaged his armed forces. He has not. He's assumed they could be much better than they were. Of course, the final point is that no plan survives first contact, and, and there's a, it's a two-sided game. Uh, Putin assumed he'd get everything his own way, but I'm delighted to hear from all the reports we're getting that he's not. Um, we are seeing uh, protests against the war in Russia itself, in St. Petersburg and some other uh, uh, towns as well. Uh, of course, protesting in Russia carries its own risks, so it's hard to really gauge uh, what that represents. Uh, but what do you think of internal pressure that uh, President Putin could face? And how much do you think of this crisis is about the man himself, or how much of it is it just w with Russia a as a country? Well, I think it's all about the man. He's the man who has uh, has, has made the decision uh, to throw away the rule book and invade a neighboring democratic country with mass force. 
I, I, again, I salute the, the brave demonstrators in Russia. Um, they are taking huge risks by stepping up to the mark and doing this. And I think it indicates a need really to reach out from the West to civil society in Russia um, to say we're with you, uh, we're, we, we don't, you know, this is not about individual Russians, it's about the leader of your state who has effectively turned your state into a pariah state as a result of what is, frankly, war criminal activity. Um, you use very uh, strong words in an interviews, various interviews you've given over the past few days, basically saying how the West was just totally unprepared for this. Where do you think the Western alliance went wrong? Well, I think the Western alliance went, went, was asleep at the wheel, frankly, for, 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 for years after the end of the Cold War, particularly, I would, say, I would highlight, after the Crimea invasion in 2014. What we have seen is cumulative disarmament, in, particularly in European countries, the throwing away of great swathes of military capability, which, frankly, are needed in war and which we sorely need now. So there's going to need to be, as with Germany, putting immediately 100 billion euro into modernizing the, uh, the, uh, the Bundeswehr. So should every European country be doing that, to modern, including Britain, I should say, to, modern, to, to really bring up its armed forces up to scratch. And there's not much time, uh, so they need to get on with it. A lot of comparisons, of course, are being made with uh, World War II. And in an article that you wrote, you also mentioned that Ukraine is almost certainly lost now, like Czechoslovakia back in 1938. In light of, in light of that, uh, what do you think the risk of all-out war in Europe is right now? Well, to your first point, is Ukraine completely lost? I fear that in the long term, might will prevail, despite the incompetence shown by the Russian armed forces, and that, uh, that Putin will, will take control. Um, but that doesn't mean to say Ukraine is lost, and it's up to the West to ensure that we support, continue to support in every way we possibly can, uh, with weapons, with equipment, with training, and above all, to start to help plan and, and support uh, what I'm sure will be a, uh, a resistance movement in Ukraine. Um, so we need to help the Ukrainians keep the flame alive and, and make life impossible for any Russian occupier. Sir Richard Sheriff, NATO Deputy Supreme Commander between 2011 and 2014 and author of the book 2017 War with Russia. Uh, sir, thank you so much for sharing your views with us. Thank you. Thank you.